Hello, hello, hello guys. My name is Tapsi Gift and I'm here in Tenopi, Ukraine. So who is joining me today? Who is joining me? <laughs> this is Tapsi Gift and I'm here in Tenopi, Ukraine. You know, a few days ago, I think that was uh, two days ago, right? We we're talking about sexual and uh, general questions to ask before you get married like before you say yes to you that your sweet sweet partner <laughs> and it was super 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 awesome just super super wonderful you know i was so blessed by your comment <laughs> and we really had a debate on the comment box and it was really funny you know it was really fun <laughs> so we had um you know the part one of sexual and general questions to ask before you you know <laughs> to ask your spouse to be hello Satokwetosin thank you for joining God bless you hello Abina Atta thank you for joining God bless you please as you come in help me share the video and invite your friends invite your friends guys <laughs> invite your friends today's gonna be another beautiful day hello mustafa thank you for joining happy salah <laughs> how is the salah celebration going you know today we're gonna be talking about sexual and general questions to ask your spouse before you say yes before you get married <laughs> before you tie the knot you know to ask your spouse to be questions you need to ask your spouse to be it doesn't matter if it's a he or she questions to ask hello my husband's just joined clemsy clement thank you so much sir, for joining god bless you hello uga thank you for joining god bless you please help me share the video and invite your friends so those of you who missed two days ago's video the past one of this video please i beg you go look for that one because that one was hurt it was hurt you know we talked about erection problems we talked about <laughs> We, had, we talked about super, 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 a lot of points that, you know, people don't like to talk about when it comes to relationship and, you know, hmm. and it was really, really vital. It was a vital information that everybody needed to know, everybody needed to, you know, get to hear about, but, you know, the, we don't get to discuss it. Hello, Ma Ara Romi. Thank you so much for joining. Coffee Power, thank you for watching. God bless you. Please help me share the video and invite your friends. You know, <laughs> we had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time two days ago when I did a part one of this video. And you know, I got some uh, questions. Somebody inboxed me some questions. <laughs> But I just pick one of that question because I think few of the questions I already answered in my first video. So I picked just one of the questions to answer today. So I guess the person will be blessed as well. <laughs> so if you missed that video, please check my Facebook wall and you would be blessed. Hello, sad Richard. Thank you so much for joining. God bless you, sir. So please help me share, 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 share the video and invite your friends, okay? Yeah. Somebody say, sexual question to access public. Like, are you serious? Are there, questions? are there sexual questions to ask? Like, yeah, 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 darling. Yes, there are a lot of sexual questions that we don't get to ask, especially, you know, this African mentality. Hello, Kolawale. Thank you for joining. Hello, Ezuma. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Hello, Innocent Makaji. Oh, good to have you. Thank you for joining. Hello, John. John Godsense. Thank you for joining. God bless you. So, share, 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 guys. Share, share, share. Hi, Sek. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Innocent is saying hello. Hi, hi. Hi, hi, too. <laughs> hello. Bonjour. Bonsoir. <laughs> but Innocent, don't come and confuse me. I don't know how to speak French. You should go away. Uh huh. So, <laughs> so how are you guys all doing today? Hello, Diamond Ranting. Thank you so much for joining, sir. God bless you. Please share the video and invite your friends. For those of you who did not watch the first video I did on this topic, <laughs> I guess that the, that video is, is already for, it's, if, if I'm not mistaken, it should be 40, it should be 4,000 views already, okay? Because it was hot, it was super, super hot and we had a debate, you know, we had a debate on the comment box and it was really interesting, you know? <laughs> 
the point where things that you know uh, that some um, people will not like to hear hello sir sunday thank you for joining hello man wafa idara thank you for joining god bless you so if you missed that video please 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 go check it out go watch the video because we talked about reality we talked about things that when they're not written on books yeah <laughs> things that uh my religious i don't know about your own religious people <laughs> but my religious people never told me to ask when i want to get married and things that my parents never asked me to ask when i want to get married but you know what it's a problem but i i you know i depicted that problem from relationship from views from you know things i saw so i had to you know bring it to reality and uh, and meanwhile i also asked my spouse some of those questions you know before i got married so they say charity begins at home right yeah 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 i asked him <laughs> so don't play yourself okay don't be too religious to blind you know to keep quiet and you know pretend like some things are just um, not don't bother don't bother asking hello john Arthur, thank you for joining and masola thank you for joining you know some people's like ah, somebody watched the first video and it's like those questions say dumb i said are you serious because you don't want the truth because this thing is just for those who want to hear the truth okay so i'm going to do like a recap of what we did two days ago so you have an idea of what we've been talking about you know and how interesting it has been okay so the first question i asked <laughs> in the first video was i told lady sweetheart don't forget to ask your man your husband to be you know your spouse to be <laughs> Do you have an erection problem? <laughs> I asked them to ask the man, do you have an erection problem? And somebody was like, Whoa, oh, where do you want me to start? How do I ask him? How do I ask him for an erection problem? Whoa. Well, if you don't ask him, you you will you are you you know <laughs> you are likely to get into one what I call one chance or reality.com.org, you know. <laughs> because you know, a lot of men will not tell you baby girl, I have an erection problem and all that. They won't tell you, okay? So I love you, I love you, you just date to cut and probably you know that's kind of religious um courtship or dating whereby the girl doesn't have to sleep with the man or doesn't have to do you know you know those those kind of stuff with the man. So it has to be everybody you know hello hello relationship had to be just on the you know normal base and eventually you put the ring and say yes i do and then you welcome to reality.com.org because you know what you're going to find out that the man doesn't have erection he has erection defection <laughs> he, you know he doesn't have erection then you're going to spend the rest of your life with this partner right you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with this partner then what are you going to do what are you going to do so i gave some tricks on how you you can find out if your man has an erection problem and as well i talked we talked about um ladies <laughs> you know that learn to discuss these things because it's quite important quite important and we talked about you as a man ask your wife to be have you been raped before if you have been raped before what are the what where what what exactly did you do afterwards okay because i gave some examples how that you know some women had become violent not because they were born like that but because of the the stuff they went through why they were that way why they were youths why they were teenagers why they were single all right so they've gone through rape cases and they have not psychologically treated it and it's been really really a problem and you think <laughs> uh, you know this sweet sexy looking chick it's normal she might not be normal wait until she get she gets upset then you know she's not normal so we talked about you as a man ask your girl to be your wife to be do you sweethearts have you been raped before and if she has been raped before ask her what exactly happened afterwards have you psychologically been i know been treated okay because if she doesn't go through you know psychological treatment <laughs> believe me she can stab you to death tomorrow and she won't even know what she's doing because you know because she's still carrying over the anger of yesterday and she can you know, you vet that anger on you or your children. Okay, so 
children raised under such kind of parents are liable to you know either be killed or have some molestation as well okay so you need to understand that you know this thing happens of course there are some men also who go through molestation sexual molestation before they go married so before you are you're you are about to tie the knot ask your husband to be have you been raped before as well if you have been raped before then what exactly happened afterwards Okay, Innocent is saying something I want to read. It's so interesting. He said, a female Nigerian pastor kept her virginity for her husband, but she was met with a very sharp disappointment as the husband was unable to satisfy her. All right. Okay. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Some people just blindly go into marriage. They blindly go into marriage. Knowing that marriage is forever. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a union that will last forever. Right. Okay. So if it's supposed to be a union that will last forever, you are supposed to make all the inquir inquiries you need to know before you go into that, uh, that marriage. Okay. You don't just go because love is blind because you know, they say love is blind or because you love this person love it see there are things that um that needs to be discussed that it's so it's reality this uh, you are see it's not just it's not like um it's not like you want you're going to the market to buy to buy a pair <laughs> a pair of shoes right you buy a pair of shoes and when you get home the the shoes are not properly okay and all that you go back and return the shoes and all that it doesn't work like that it's supposed to be to till death us do part right to <laughs> date us do part yeah so the woman kept her virginity beautiful but what eventually did she get you know because she did not ask the vital questions that she needed to ask you know she got herself into what she never expected because what the religious men will tell you you know don't even don't even go to visit the brother or sisters don't go visit the uh, the brothers don't go visit the sisters and Oh, and if you want to probably know yourselves, get to ask him what do you like, what don't you like, blah blah blah. Those kind of is are those questions good? They are good, but not as much as the one you know that had to do with intimacy. <laughs> Hello, Mastella, thank you for joining. God bless you. So not as good, not as good as the ones that had to do with intimacy. So don't just assume that this person you're marrying is super 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 okay okay it doesn't work like that make sure you ask those vital questions and get all the answers you want to you are you're sure of getting and as you get the answers sit sit down and ask yourself can i can i live with it if you if you if the man if if, if the man is so sincere to tell you that okay i have a sec i have a i have an erection problem i have a, an erectile problem you as a woman, you are the wife to be. Can you, can you cope? If you, if you, if you are saying yes, I will, and I will be faithful to you till death us do us part. They're beautiful, okay. But men, what I'm talking about, why I'm doing this video is because people are having problems. Marriages are divorcing every now and then, and some of the reasons, some of the well, things I'm discussing today are part of the reasons why people are divorcing. Okay, because they never get to ask those important questions before they got married, and they just get into the marriage, and reality hits them, and they are like, "Oh my God, I wish I had asked. I wish that." So you were wish you were you had all the time to ask. You caught it for one month, two months, three months, six months, one year, two year, whatever, but you never had the opportunity to ask these vital questions, and you think it's just <laughs> it's okay. It's not okay, sweetie. It's not okay. You would have saved yourself from heartbreak, from heart attack, from you know ending your life, getting to take your life by yourself because of the shame and the disgrace and what people had to say and all that you couldn't stand public opinion you had to go end your life but questions you would have asked now and make decisions for yourself you didn't ask and all of a sudden you get into the marriage and reality hits you and then you want to end your life so you would have saved your life yesterday because of simple questions you would have asked okay to get the answers so right it takes nothing all, all you need to do is to make sure you get answers and Make sure it's okay for you to work with. If it's not okay for you, my dear sister, they said a broken relationship is better than that. Uh, you know, a broken marriage as well. So please, okay. So if you're okay with it, why not? So I talked about how that um, men should ask their women, all right, those questions, and as well, women should ask them, their their husbands to be that a question of an erection. And as well, I we also talked about the last time that. Uh, 
husbands why should ask their husbands would they like to have their own biological children would they like to have their own biological children and i gave you reasons why some men would not want to have biological children some men do not have the, uh, the energy to take care of children they are not financially ready they are not mentally ready they are not emotionally ready they are not okay okay makaji just gave us another bomb he said asking for a lady i love my man so much he's very nice and gentle but he has an erection problem beyond medical help should i go ahead and marry i don't know why i'm not seeing the rest of the questions okay maybe should i go and marry him right should i go ahead and marry him okay so that's the thing i'm saying okay if you ask your man do you have an erection problem and he says oh he has an erection problem so the first question the first thing that um, you know you should do is to ask yourself will i be able to leave would i be able to cope with this man who has an erection problem an erection problem that cannot be medically solved you know so do i love him enough to uh, if that marriage is going to last for 50 years 60 years 100 years can i stay with that man for that long years and never cheat on him because you have to be faithful that vow that ring you see that ring that you are giving to him or that you're giving to her it's a it's a vow that you're not supposed to break right so if you are ready as a woman to say yes i do yes i do i mean yes i do faithfully yes i do and you can beautiful go into the marriage this is your word because I, I i got a i read a quote one time that says a man is known for his word right so if you if you know you can beautiful but what i'm talking about is that some men tend to hide this issue from their wives to be they hide that they have those problems and the women the women don't get to ask as well because they feel like it's not important so why should i ask i every man is functional every man should be functional okay innocent is also saying do you suggest premarital sex in order in order for us to understand our sexual compatibility well 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 you know we talked about that question <laughs> in the first video i did okay i to me if you ask me like you just asked me i would not because it was a serious debate on my first video <laughs> you know some people are saying yes 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 let's test the drive let's test the drive i know if she's you no, know, if she's if she's good enough if she's good on bed or you know let's test the drive i know if the man is also good on bed and all that and i told them like me i don't believe in premarital you know sex okay you you know i don't know but i don't believe <laughs> i don't uh, preach people i don't i advise people to go into it because i know of men who say oh i want to test the lady to see if she's okay for me to you know get married to her she's sexually active and all that but you know what they they end up doing they end up testing one two three four five they keep testing as if women are testing objects okay so it's not supposed to be like that you don't test people you're not supposed to you don't you don't ask the woman i want to test you i want to have uh, sex with you to be sure that you are sexually okay believe me in you feel when you when you're done having sex with that woman you will find fault tomorrow i want to test another because there's this inquisitiveness that comes into you that you want you think that somebody else is better off there's always something better out there so you keep testing you keep testing and before you know you just see yourself becoming um loosed you know sexually loosed you know be, without even knowing you it wasn't something you made you psychologically planned right but you just keep doing it okay so it's not right women are not supposed to be tested they're not testing objects if you love them you go into it you pay the bride price before you get married to her so you are not supposed to do testing i'm sorry sir hello sayomi thank you so much for joining um i saw someone else i saw vin Olga. thank you so much for joining god bless you so nobody is a testing object not even the man not even the woman okay some women will say oh, say oh some women will also say let me test the man 
nobody is a testing object okay everybody's a personality so if you want to know if the man has an erectile problem and he's telling you he does not have there there are other ways to to get to know without having to have sex with the person and i discuss it in my first video if you want to know so go go check the first video you're going to get the tips i said in the first video without having sex you're, go, you're going to know if the man have an erection problem okay so yeah that's the stuff that's what one of the things we discussed um uh, uh so two days ago yeah that's it so it is so important and people shy away and people hide you know under religion people hide people hide under the umbrella of i love him he loves me we love ourselves oh god he's so nice oh god he's so cute she's so beautiful blah, blah, blah. you know you hide you, hide, you tend to hide truth under shadows. By the time reality hits you, yeah, you forget that that man is handsome. You forget that that lady is pretty. You forget that that guy is, you know. You forget all those things because see, there's a better, there's a, there's something higher than <laughs> than the the physics you're seeing, okay? And I gave some reasons why some men do not want to have their biological children they don't have they're not financially stable yet to take care of children they don't they are some of some of them are financially stable but they don't have you know the um, they are not psychologically sound to take care of children they they don't want the stress that comes with children we're having children and some men will tell you that oh i don't want my woman to be out of shape i don't want that sweet 16 to disappear so i don't want you to have a baby sweetheart and you never told her before you got married to her and this woman was expecting that okay it is normal that a man would want his own biological child so she she got into the marriage with the hope that she was going to have a child for you but you didn't tell her that you don't want to have a child and after the marriage you just she just got to know that sweetheart in this marriage we're not going to have a child and she's like what okay so it's deception it's deception so get to discuss reality ask him would you want your own biological children if you want your own biological children when would you want it okay because i also discussed about the when the when is also very important as well okay some men will will not want to have children for the first five years of their marriage for the first seven years of their marriage so you need to discuss it with your spouse. You need to discuss, discuss it with your spouse. Ah, is she okay with it? Okay, is she okay with sweetheart? I this marriage. Ah, uh, I would want us to have children at this time. Before I mean before before you say yes to her. Before you you put the ring, discuss it. Tell her and let her be okay with it. If she's okay with it, then you guys are at balance. Then you can go ahead and get married. Don't tell her after you've said yes to her. Don't tell her after you've taken her to the altar and after you paid her bride price, you've taken her to your house and then you start telling her realities because you think that she can no she she does she's trapped right she's trapped she cannot she can't get out of the marriage again. So you you brought her into you deceived her and then brought her into reality. To, for her to live with it so it is wrong so i tell people please if he does not talk about it woman please discuss it if those things he he didn't he he probably forgot uh, let's assume he forgot right so, uh, remind him let's talk about it so if you guys cannot reach a compromise if you guys cannot reach an understanding uh-huh then you take your rightful decision because it is better you walk away now than walking away tomorrow because some people have lost their life you know because they never thought of some things they never talked about some you know vital things before they got married so it's so important so let's go to the point i have today all right so one of the points i i have is um have you had a child before so ask your husband to be have you had a child before or ask your wife to be have you had a child before because some men cannot put up with women who had children who had once had children before so don't don't hide that reality from him don't hide that rea reality from her if you once had a child before go ahead and tell her you had a baby girl somewhere sometime you had a baby boy somewhere sometime you did you, you uh, go ahead tell him as well you have once had a baby girl or you once had a child whether the child is late or the child is alive go ahead tell them because some women had once had children before and probably that child died do you know that they are not still they are not they've not left the reality of the birth of the child and the death of the child had not left them. 
psychologically has not left them. Okay, so sometimes they are lost in thought. Sometimes they behave like something is mentally wrong with them because of the of the trauma that that went through with either the birth of the child or the death of the child. So imagine marrying a woman and you and you are thinking, okay, she's a she's a fresh woman, right? And having to battle with this um, psycho issue of she, the, the child is always appearing in her dreams or what, 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 something happened, the trauma that she went through blah, 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 happened. So why, why are you hiding reality? Why are you hiding that reality? Why don't you tell the man, I, see, this is my story. This is what happened. This is what happened. And let the man understand that, okay, this has happened, what happened to you. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm fully aware. And so if I hear it tomorrow on the streets, I will not be surprised. I won't be shocked that you once had a child before. Okay, so... It is very important you tell your spouse, I once had a child before, and if the child is even alive, go ahead, still tell the, the man that my child is alive, or the child is my, or my grannies, or the child is my parents, or the child is whatever, where, 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 where. Tell them, because it's not after 10 years of the marriage, a child surfaces in the house, and he like, sweetheart, meet my child, meet my son, or meet my daughter. As in, are you talking about spiritual daughter, or spiritual son, or you're talking about adopted child or i don't understand so after 10 years of our marriage the real your real child surfaces and comes and then you are introducing this child to me do you really want to do you really want me to believe all that you are you're going to tell me as time goes on as a woman you are in your husband's house and you guys had she, you have believed you believed everything he he told you all of a sudden after 14 years of marriage a 14 years old child or a 16 years old child or a 20 years old young man just walk into the house and say and then you introduce him and say this is my son and i'm like whoa really so what happened why didn't you tell me and you expect me to just be you okay so I would assume that you deceived me, right? I would assume that you you've been lying to me all the while. You've been lying to me. You you I, you just used me. You just used me. Okay. So as much as I want to be truthful to you, you have to be truthful to me in return. Tell me if you had a child. I why would like? Well, it's a, it's not a big deal. People had children. And they are still living. Some of them are still are living with the children in their husband's house. And the man welcomed the child. And it's and the home is happy. Everybody is happy. You wouldn't even know if you if you tell the man that you once had a child before. If the man is going to say, "Come on, bring in the child." The child might be favored by this your spouse to be. The child might have, might find favor in his sight. So why would you lie that you don't have to? You don't. You've not had a child before, or you had it. You you like nothing happened. Why you pretend like nothing happened? So it is wrong. And do you know some some women when they see their biological child, they pretend like in real life. You know when <laughs> God have mercy. Like when they go out. Let's say they go out with their husband and the the child that they had for this man they go out and they bump into their her own real child you know because of the fear of telling this man that i had a child and this is my child because she never told the man before they got married life right so she will pretend that that child, that guy or that girl is not you know she has nothing to do with this person so i've seen women that uh, you know, <laughs> that will financially be helping a particular person, and then the husband will ask the, the wife, Why are you always helping this person? Like, oh, you know, the mother of this child died so many years ago. This, 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 you know, you know, should, you know, this child is homeless. This, this, this. But you are the mother of this child. Why the lie? So if the man gets to know that this child is yours, imagine the emotional draw, imagine the heartbreak, imagine the, the, you know, the pain, the, the, you know, the pain that he will go through having to know that you've been lying to him all these years. There was a woman, this one is even, this one is hell as in the story I'm about to tell you now, it's and something that happened in my own eyes like this, because I know this guy, he sings very well. I think he, you know, he, he, had, he, he's one of, uh, Pastor Chris, very, uh, good friend. I mean, Pastor Chris, the Christ Embassy Church, right? The guy is very, I think he stays, he stays abroad right now. But this story I'm about to say is for real. This guy, 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I don't know why people are so deceptive. I I don't know why people can just lie. I mean, this guy's father has not his biological father, right? At the um, I think he was about maybe he was about 18 years or so, you know, when he left the country and uh, the father, the father, the man who assumed that he, this guy, this son, this son is my biological son, right? <laughs> Sent this guy abroad and he was to study medicine or so. I think I forgot in the country he went to. And, you know, the man was spending so much on this guy, hoping that this is my son. And that, that was the only son in that family. So the man was thinking that this guy is my son, right? <laughs> All of a sudden, they got to know that this, that, that boy was not his son. I mean, the man slumped and died. <laughs> Having to train a child for, for how many years? For 20 something years, because the guy is 20 something years right now. And all of a sudden, you get to know that this child does not belong to you. Wow, wow, wow. Like, wow, wow, wow. The man died. The man died because he was already aging. He died with just heart attack. Having to imagine that this boy he has been living with is not his son. It's not his true son. The mother has been lying to him, to him all this while. The man died out of shock. Out of shock, out of trauma, he died. He slumped and died instantly, just he because he heard that this boy is not his son, and he had lived to believe that this side is his. Okay, so this kind of things are really, really bad, and they're really, really breaking homes. So if I didn't mean the man never died, he never slumped and died, he would have sent the woman packing, right? The woman would have, would have, you know gone also with a heartbreak because of the lies of yesterday she told her husband after close to 20 years she kept hiding reality right so it is wrong some people get to know at a time when there's there's blood transfusion and all that you get to know that your blood does not match with that of your son that you guys have nothing in common okay so it's so wrong so let's discuss when you when you're about to get married please ask your spouse to be uh, do you have a child have you had child have you had children before have you been pregnant before even if you lost the baby you know have you had an abortion before so ask them those questions if you had an abortion before what happened you know what happened afterwards? Do you ever had an other, uh, other abortions? And if yes, so uh, what exactly happened? How were you able to take off the uh, the child? What kind of um, medic, me, uh, medical attention was given to you? You know, was your womb in uh, mistakenly taken out so that you uh, the man will know that okay, this woman had gone through hard times in life, right? She had gone through worse times in life, and mistakenly her womb was taken off while she was trying to abort. Now, I'm I'm coming into this marriage with the reality that my wife does not have a womb. So if, I, if we're going to have a biological child, it only takes a miracle. So with this, this marriage as I'm going in, I'm going in with the mindset that we might not have a biological children. So because I love her so much, I am ready to adopt children. I am for her sake, I'm ready to adopt as many kids as she can live with and let's be happy and enjoy our lives. Okay, so isn't that better than hiding the truth that you you no longer have a womb that you live the life and mistakenly you were you, your womb was removed by abortion you know and the man getting to know why do you have to hide it and then pretend that everything is okay then get into the marriage and the man keeps trying to get a child and it's not working only to get go to the hospital check your womb and they discover that you don't have a womb what kind of explanation are you going to give to the man what was the womb taken from the dream? Didn't you know that you didn't have a womb all the while and you didn't tell him? Are you not wicked? Isn't that wickedness? Isn't that deception? What 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 kind of what kind of explanation do you want to give for that kind of wickedness? Isn't that wickedness? 
if you had if you had an abortion that took off your 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 your, your womb why don't you be truthful rather than going to the marriage and you're like oh my god i'm so sorry sweetheart please forgive me the reason why i didn't tell you i was afraid i was going to lose you really really are you serious you're afraid you want you you, you you're going to lose him and because you're afraid you, you're going to lose him you refuse to tell him the truth now you've told him the truth they've got to find out and now you're losing him you're losing him in disgrace he's gonna send you packing in disgrace he's gonna beat you off if possible if he's if, if he's one that beats that hits women he's gonna hit you he's gonna disgrace you he's gonna disgrace your family oh my god it's crazy it's not just the, the 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 hatred and the beating and all that that it's even the wor as worse as the fact that you deceive the man the fact that you lied to him if the man has been truthful to you all the years all the times you were courting dating him all the times he got married to you he had been faithful he has been truthful to you oh my god then you have yourself to blame then you are a wicked person for real for real so ask the woman, have you had an abortion before? Have you had an abortion before? If you have had an abortion before, what exactly happened? Tell me the story. Don't just tell me you had an abortion before. I'm like, okay, you had an abortion before. Okay, so uh -huh, so now, so what now happened after, afterwards, you know? Let's go for a medical checkup. Maybe she, okay, maybe she does not know that her womb was taken off, right? Let's go for medical checkup. Let's be sure that you are still okay. Because some men cannot live without their biological children. No. They can't. Though. There's no miracle. There's no prophecy. There's no prophets that will keep that marriage going. There's nothing you will do that will keep that. Okay. <laughs> some women feel like they can always, you know, hide their truth, their, their lies. Okay. So some of them go, you know, go fetish. Go fetish just to keep that man because the man is so wealthy, has so much money, so and the man is not seeing his biological children, and you've gone fetish to make sure that the man does not ask questions that will bring out the truth, and you've been hiding it. And the man has been saying, Oh, sweetheart, don't worry. When it's when in the, when it's God's time, he will give us our own child, he'll give us our own children, he will bless us. He is God, he has his you know he has he has ways of doing his own thing but you yourself you yourself your conscience is judging you that this man is being sympathetic with you he's trying to encourage you he's trying to tell you that i am not here because i i didn't marry because i want to have children so don't bother yourself when when the child isn't coming don't worry at the right time the children are going to come so the man is trying to be so nice to you but right inside your mind sweetheart you had been the one you have been the one who had the problem, but you have not been bold enough to tell him, right? And when you go, when the man is not there, you go and shed some, some, um, some crocodile tears and say, oh God, forgive me. What, what kind of forgiveness? What kind of, why are you asking God to forgive you when you are the liar here? Why are you asking God for forgiveness? You are supposed to be asking that man for forgiveness because you are the one who has been hiding the truth from him. And so women have been paying doctors. They pay doctors a lot of money from the husband's pocket, not to tell the man truth. Not to tell the man truth. So if it means sleeping with the doctor, for the doctor to keep hiding that truth, they will forever sleep with that doctor so that the husband does not get to know the truth. So I, I, I think it's high time that people really open their eyes and, and, you know, be real, be real when it comes to relationship and, you know, and this person, I'm so certain I want to get married to you. Believe me, I will not blindfoldly, I won't blind my eye to reality and just accept you and just agree that, okay, we get married and everything is okay. And then I'll just pretend that nothing happened. Okay, I have some questions. <laughs> I have some questions here before I continue. Uh, Sir Philip say I missed out of the first video. Okay, <laughs> the man may not even be aware of his problem. Okay, the, okay, the man will not be aware of his problem. Sir Philip, are you sure? Are you sure? If the man has an erectile problem, if the man has an erection problem, he will not know that he has an erection problem. Is that true? Is that for real? All the men in the house, please answer me. Is that for real? Because what I know, 
<laughs> what I know is that I know that men react to a lot of things, even on the streets, you know, it has to do with the mind, right? There are things you can see even on the streets. Instantly, you have an erection right on the street as a human being, as a man. So if you, if you as a man does not have erection, you should know that, wow, I've not had an erection. I don't have an erection because whether movies, whether things, whether, whether mind, whether thoughts, that there's not, there's not things, there are a lot of things that can get you aroused. Okay, so if it doesn't work, you should know that something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. So go to the doctor, get to know what exactly is wrong with you. And if you get to know that it's an erection problem, when you have a girl you're dating, tell her the truth. Tell her the truth. And if she's ready to cope up with it, she's ready to stay with it for the rest of her life, beautiful. But don't lie to her. Don't lie to her. Please, don't lie to her. Don't, you know, because some men... So women sometimes when they try to get emotional when they're dating a man, the guy will try to be like, no, ah, please, I, I don't want to have, I don't know, I don't want to have sex before marriage. And please, let's not be talking about some sexual or emotional things, you know. I love you and I don't want to defile you before marriage. Whereas nothing is, they don't have anything standing, no. Nothing is standing at all. So they are trying, they are looking for excuses to run away from reality. Okay, so when woman wants to play with them, you know, jokingly, they don't want because nothing is happening. No, the woman, they are thinking that, okay, the woman is supposed to observe that something is happening with them, but they will, it won't work because they, they think that, oh, the woman will catch them at that point that nothing is working. Okay, so my, uh, innocent saying, Lo, are you sure you are not being entirely dishonest in this case? Your answer is guided by moral conviction, but you and I know that. I, I can't find, I don't know why I can't find the remaining stuff. <laughs> so the thing is, well, innocent, it's actually up to you to, to have a premarital sex, you know, but me as... Um, as a human and uh, as a believer i wouldn't want i wouldn't advise people going into premarital sex even even if i'm not even if i'm not a christian i wouldn't want my child to go to become an, a, a testing object in the hand of another man uh, how many men will have to test her before they actually get married to her so imagine if every woman is being tested before they get married to a, a man would have i don't know how many men would have tested me and i don't know how how i will be before my husband will come and marry me then so somebody would have maybe 10 men or 20 or whatever would have tested me and feel like okay she's not that active for me she's not and the man will go right another one will test another one will test so i don't understand how i would have been looking you know vaginally or you know health wise for my husband to now marry me for me to finally find the right person to marry so having to test people it's, that, that does not make sense. So let's even re, re, remove religion from it. To me, ordinarily, it doesn't make sense because it, maybe to you as a man, you don't get to lose anything. You don't. Nothing happens. Nothing happens to you, right? But frequently, as you test a woman, she's enlarging things. She, her body is getting, you know, wider. So you keep testing. So how long are you going to test? And how? Who? who for God's sake, who would then be the last tester? To then get married to her that's what i'm saying so let's let's not even put religion into it so let it not let it not be in that in that format if you want to know if your wife and we talked about it yesterday if a woman is not um uh, sexually active there are ways you can make her sexually active it's worse than a man who does not have erection all right so it's worse than a man who doesn't have erection so it can it's workable we talked about this yesterday faith say no okay my husband say innocent you may need to watch the first video for premarital sex okay thank you sir um so they will say if i don't know i had a child from other relationship okay if i don't know ah okay if you don't know well then you 
the wife will, your wife would understand that even you you don't know about it maybe you you had a you had a relationship with a girl and she was pregnant with your baby and you know you you, you guys parted ways she never got to tell you that you had a child that she had a child for you and you never get to meet her till maybe 20 years or, or or 30 years down the line and you're already married and you already have children and you get to know then it's understand i the wife should understand that okay it's not your fault you didn't know about it what i'm talking about is a man who knows that he had a child and he is pretending that nothing happened and he's keeping it you know from the woman and that that one is deception it's okay and we're not supposed to be deceiving ourselves we're not supposed to be lying to ourselves we're supposed to be you know living in truth okay some john say i agree my husband say what if the woman also had multiple experiences would you like to marry her <laughs> okay i think he's responding to uh innocent magazine okay sir philip is saying i don't know any man in nigeria that would like to marry a wombless lady because of love okay okay thank you sir god bless you so there are men sir if the man truly loves her and she opens up to him they can get married and adopt children yeah of course true there are men actually who can marry a woman without a womb but the thing is the woman should be truthful enough to tell the man the truth okay this is what happened to me i don't have a womb as, as i stand right now i'm sorry even if you don't marry me it's okay but i have to tell you the truth so be truthful enough you never can tell the man will still say i want to still marry you the way you are i love you okay children um children are blessings from god and so if i got children from the motherless baby baby home they are still blessings to us even if we don't get it biologically okay so having to train another man's child is still a blessing to us okay so it's not not a big deal uh -huh. so philip is saying erection doesn't always mean he can father a child of course that's another topic there that's another another topic out there okay so philip is also saying an erection does not always produce a desired result <laughs> of course of course it does not produce the desired result but what we are talking about is the truth tell the person you don't have an erection you don't usually you don't understand it's been like that okay so the person gets to know that <laughs> you don't you don't have all right so it does not matter whether it produced the the desired result or not but the fact that the truth is being spoken beautiful you told the truth before the marriage beautiful okay so i uh -huh. so now what um let's move on so the next question here i uh, i would want the both couples to ask themselves is um <laughs> having to know what the not what does your well, well your partner or your spouse to be okay what do they what are their views about alcohol about um gambling about drugs what are their views have they have they have they been engaged before into drugs and um, into alcoholism um gambling have they have they engaged themselves once in one time in life before have they had any experience like that before and if yes, have they sincerely let go of it? Because believe me, there are some uh, uh, there are some people who are addicted to gambling. Wow, <laughs> there are some people who are addicted to alcohol. There are some people who are addicted to drugs, sweethearts. So <laughs> it is so important, you know, if your husband to be or if your wife to be, you know, don't say it's just a man who, hey, don't go there. Go to, you know, I'm sure go to America. There are a lot of women who do drugs, okay? There are a lot of women who do alcohol. There are a lot of women who gamble as well, okay? So <laughs> it is vice versa. The woman asks the man. The man asks the woman. This is a both party question. Ask the man, have you, do you do drugs? Have you done drugs before? You know, have you done alcohol before? Have you done gambling before? You know, what are the level of alcoholism you've got to? What are the level of um, uh, gambling have you gone, got into? Uh, what about drugs? You know, have you done it before? If yes, get to know if they are addicted to it. Okay.
<laughs> drugs is very very dangerous and powerful okay so it would take uh, it would take god it would take determination it would take a lot of things for people to let go back of of drugs because the money that comes through drugs is quite a lot of money so it would take a man who's who is not greedy <laughs> to you know let go of their old life the life of yesterday and move on because um anything in the future that hits them they want to go back to that same thing that gives them quick money that gives them quick quick money so you know before you know you end up having a drug dealer as a husband or you end up having a drug dealer as a wife so get to know if your husband or your wife had had you know uh, something to do with alcoholism had something to do with you know gambling something to do with drugs uh, there are some women who drink to stupor there are some men who drink to stupor okay you think now they are okay because they are wearing suits <laughs> because they speak queen's english because everything they look so sweet it looks so sexy <laughs> you think everything is nice wait until they put that ring in your fingers and that's when you know that your husband is a drug addict that's when you know that he's, a, he's an alcoholic that's when you know he's a gambler so every little money that comes to the house he gambles with the money so it isn't that it's not a problem he keeps he keeps borrowing money and gambling with it and that's why he gamble he, those such men can even gamble with their wife and kids have you heard <laughs> have you heard men who gamble with their wife you know they had to gamble to the extent that their friends had to sleep with their wife because they gamble with the woman all right so she had to pay you have to pay the, the people that he gambled with via sex so your wife had to sleep with your friends because you gambled until you gambled with her so get to know if your husband is a gambler or if he had gambled before and if if he wants to con if he, he probably had done it before and how far did it go with it is it is it addicted to gambling my my dear open your eyes and open your your wisdom open your knowledge be very smart and be very articulate be, be very make sure you are in you are in the here and now understand everything that goes on with him okay because what you see today <laughs> you might see tomorrow in your marriage so get to know everything he has done in the past the kind of jobs the kind of things he did in the past you know and how how has what uh, how has he intended to you know um to go about it has he let go of it <laughs> sir philip he said like one bottle of star in a month okay <laughs> well i don't know i don't take alcohol neither my husband we don't take alcohol so i don't know <laughs> So get to know, does he drink, does he smoke, does he do drugs, does he, does he do all that, okay? So because some men will pretend because they know that this girl does not like drugs, she does not like alcohol, and those who take alcohol, because, you know, some men, before they will approach you, baby girl, they will make, they will do on, on the grand, on, or, <laughs> or by grand searching about, about you, they will get some information informations about you from people from friends they'll get to know what you like and what you don't like from people or from friends or from your relative or from your sisters or from your parents or somehow you know they will get those informations and when they get it so they will start pretending a, exactly you know start acting like the man you want you know because some women they can always talk they always tell people the kind of man they want oh, i want the man to be like this i want the woman i don't want the man to be like that i want the man to act like this i want the man to act like this so because virtually a lot of people have known the kind of man that they know that this sister likes right the guy will play the, the guy will play along he will play along because he wants to get you baby girl he wants to get you so he's gonna play that sweet man he's gonna play that um caring man that loving man that sugar-coated you know sweet mouth man he's gonna play that handsome man he's going to play that cool guy even though you know they are, th those things are not him because he wants you for himself he's going to make sure he gets everything that had to do with you that you like and he will he will portray it so that you will in turn see him as the man that you have been waiting for as the mr rights that you have been praying for as the mr rights that you have been waiting for so he's like an angel throw from heaven all right because he has done his, his background work on you already and you didn't know about it so you just saw him and everything you ever wanted in a man he has you were like oh my god this can only be god oh this can only be god i can't wait to say yes 
So just before he opens his mouth to say, will you marry me? You had already said yes long time ago be because you think that this is your Mr. Right. So you didn't bother to ask anything. You didn't bother to make the background re research about this person. You just jump into agreeing to marry him because you are looking for a tall man. Oh, and he's tall. You're looking for a man who dresses properly, dresses fine, smells so nice. Oh my, oh my, my, oh my, my. You know, and he's he has it. You're looking for a man who is so eloquent and he has it. You're looking for a man who is so intelligent and he's there. You're looking for a caring man, he's there. You're looking for this, he's there. Oh my God. God, oh my God, you're going crazy. You're telling all your friends, oh, this guy, this guy, this guy. Welcome to reality.com.org until he puts the ring in your finger. That is when you know that you have been deceived. You were deceived long, long time ago. Hello, Betty. E e Edward, thank you for joining. Hello, Okon. Thank you so much for joining. God bless you. Please, as you come in, help me share this video. Share, 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 guys. Okay, share. Let's liberate people and let's set people free and let's tell people the truth. Okay? So a lot of lies, a lot of deception, a lot of hypocrisy in marriages and relationship and people are not speaking up. People are keeping quiet. Alright? So it is so wrong and I've chosen to talk about it. Okay? I choose to talk about it and let people get to know the truth. Okay? So, because I used to, I used to, uh, my mom used to tell me a story about, uh, she told us when she was growing up that this lady, I think she was one of a kind. She was so beautiful. My mom was telling us then, you know, that this lady was so, so beautiful that if you see her, she looks like she came from the, uh, from, from Queen, I don't know, from River or something. Like she looks like a queen of, a queen of a sea, queen of a, from the sea, you know, because her skin, her skin is so, is, it's, it's like, it's out of the world, okay? If you see her, you will not know she's an African. She looks so pretty. And that was how, they said, that was how her mother was before the mother died. So she was the only child of her parent. She died, and the mother died and all that. So this girl was so, so pretty, according to my mother. So, you know, it's expected that all men will, you know, want her. Of course, all men wanted her at that moment, right? But do you know what happened eventually? This girl got into a wrong man, you know, who got married to her, okay? And um, what the man did, the man infected her, <laughs> infected her, and... Um, disappeared why because according to mom according to my mom she my mom said that when men were coming to marry this girl she was always selective she was saying no you're not the kind of man i want you know the kind of man i want you know the kind of man i want you know so that guy who you know eventually dealt with her what did the guy do the guy went to get all information about the girl about what he what she wanted and all that and posed to be like exactly what she wanted and then marry this girl and you know make her make life miserable for her and disappeared into thin air and 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 according to story my mom told me that that lady never got to marry again she got old and died and nobody go uh, married her because she was diseased she she got uh, she got one of these stds okay so so it was so bad it was so bad and to still today there are some women who still do that who still say oh i want to marry again like that it's good to have it's good to have priority and what you want right yeah it's very good but be be real be be real don't don't be don't <laughs> don't set a goal that <laughs> i used to tell my sisters don't set a goal that is almost unachievable that it looks like it only takes god for a man like that to exist you know that people have their faults and their shortcomings and all that and be ready to accommodate it if if it's poor, if the type you can accommodate hello charles kaja thank you for joining hello blackie thank you for joining god bless you so it's so so important so we were talking about drugs we were talking about drugs so make sure you know that this person does not do drugs he's drug free or whatever and even if he does drug or he has done drugs before be sure that they have really really left that part of their life and they are no longer into it then you are sure to go for, for it because you wouldn't want to be with your children tomorrow and all you hear is knock 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 
get uh, come in and you get police had to arrest your husband you know or they are looking for your husband they can't find your husband and then they detain you or your family they detain the whole family because your your husband is a drug dealer or your husband is a is a gambler okay so it's so important get to know what he does we got to know what he had done before okay and know if he's going to continue such kind of life monitor him very well don't play yourself sweetheart don't play yourself some men can pretend to be women can as well pretend don't play yourself okay uh -huh. so the next point i have here is um what exactly does it do for a living what exactly does it do presently that's where those alcoholism gambling and all that were his past life right that's if he had ever done that now get to know what exactly is he doing now some ladies don't get to act so <laughs> as long as the man is buying them shawarma the man is buying them he's taking them to all the eateries on earth the man is flying them to different countries the man buys them a car oh my money is flowing they don't care they don't care to know what he does for a living as long as money is coming in <laughs> are you serious are you serious then you are no different from the 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 clergymen the pastors who collect tithes without getting to know what their members does for do do for a living so they just collect tithes okay my husband was telling me today that okay as we saw a news on on, on on facebook and it was my husband even called my attention he was telling me that somebody um a civil servant pays 60 million to to bishop um adeboye okay 60 million i mean tight of 60 million to bishop adeboye okay it takes 600 million for for somebody to pay 60 million tight right a civil servant please how much do they pay civil servants okay so you don't ask questions you just collect because it's money and the same greed is what what has gone through in, into people's head you know when it comes to relationship as long as the guy is spending on me it's okay i don't care what he does for a living wait wait until reality hits you you see all that fun you ever had you wish it never happened you wish you had married the poorest man on earth you wish you had accepted that one who had nothing or you would have wished you had married that middle class man who came your way you would have wished you never ever married anyone because the trouble that follows what you are putting yourself into eh? <laughs> my sister when it hits you it might take your life it might take your life in a change. So don't be carried away because the man spent too much money on you. Get to know what he does. How does he get the money? Maybe he's an arm robber. Maybe the job he does is night work. In the night, they had to cover their eyes and go rob a bank or go rob three people and then get money. And he's buying you jewelries, gold, gold, Ferrari, buying you everything, putting all your pictures all over internet, calling you his queen, making you feel like you are the... You are his bright and morning star. You know, but you don't want to, you don't want reality. So the, the young man will not tell you what he does because he thinks that you have caught a mugu. And he is also thinking he also caught a mugu because for him, for, he, for him to be spending on you and you're not asking, he will also think to himself that you are not also a responsible uh, lady because if, if it's a responsible lady, she would demand to know what the guy, what her guy does for a living, right? So the guy also knows a mugu, catch mugu. So you know that you're also a mugu, right? Because, and he has a plan. He has planned what to do with you and what to do with your life. When that time comes, he's going to take what he, take all the things he has given to you and and dump you and if it means killing you he will do it so you will lose your life all because of frivolities you lose your life you lose everything you lose integrity maybe you were you were you maybe you you, you studied law or maybe you studied medicine in school and all that you were so responsible maybe you even work in a bank or you're working in an npc or whatever big companies but you have to drop you have to stop working because this guy is giving you all the money you can you can ever work for right so he was just too much providing for you so you're so excited you're so happy you're so carried away from you know that you could not remember to ask him realities you could not remember to ask him sweetheart where do you work how come you're spending so much money like this where exactly do you work and how much are you paid in a month and if he tells you oh i work in social so cooperative company trace it don't don't wait don't try don't try to say okay he work at cooperative blah 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 and you forget about it trace that company even if it means if even if he says the company is not in the country where you are residing, it's one country or blah, blah, blah. Trace that company. Make sure that he's actually working there. 
Trace the company. Don't play with your life. Don't mortgage your life, you know, into, into the frivolities of today. There are a lot of deceptions and people are losing their lives on a daily basis. And you get to marry him only to know that, wow, 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 this man has not been working. This man has nothing to do with a legal job. It's an illegal job he's doing. He's either doing yahoo, yahoo, or he's a gangster, or he's doing one illegal thing or the other. And you cannot say no because you have been eating the money all the while he was dating you and now you are even a wife so how are you going to get out when you get out he's going to arrest both you and your family or he's going to threaten to kill you or your family hello sir george thank you george peter thank you so much for joining god bless you please share this video and invite your friends these are realities i'm talking about and people do not want to face these realities okay I've, i know pastors who will say who will tell a lady uh yeah, as long as it's the will of god which will of god <laughs> oh my god oh my god oh my god so because you heard from heaven joy 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 thus says the lord emmanuel is your husband and because you heard the sound like that <laughs> or you heard somebody came to tell you that this person is your husband or this person is your wife because you heard something like that or because somebody told you something like that me that your pastor told you something like that or your or your friends or your family members or your whatever told you and you just believe it and blindfold your eyes to realities of the questions you needed to ask you're supposed to ask have you even checked if you guys are, are compatible when it comes to you know genotype are you aa is is the person compatible with you are you ss is the person compatible with you don't blindly get into things that will kill you tomorrow you don't say uh, my pastor told me that this girl is my is my girl and medically you do not fit because you are as and she is as there is every every possibility of you giving birth to a sickle cell children uh, a sickle cell child okay so <laughs> it's so important even if you heard that this, uh, this, um, uh, you know, it said like that. Your pastor told you that God said that this is. Uh, don't just agree that okay, it, since it's coming from your clergyman, since it's coming from this pastor, it must be God. No, it doesn't just work that way. Make sure that there is a conviction within you. Make sure that you get a confirmation of what God says because God does not. It's not. It does not confuse. It's not an. It's not an author of confusion. So before even God will send somebody to come and tell you that this person is your husband or this person is your wife he it's like a confirmation to what he had already told you of what you have already gotten okay so let nobody swing you into prophecies and tell you that this person is your spouse and medically wise you don't fit you don't fit in so you 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 are you are you are as and this person is as or you are ss and this person is as for god's sake what kind of children what kind of generation are you going to bring into those world you bring in children who will come and suffer and suffer and drain your money every day you are in the hospital every day you medications and all that is that are you ready for that reality are you ready for that medical reality are you ready for that real reality because you cannot escape children that that are ss you can escape it you are either ss and the person is as or you are as and the person is ss there's a there's, there's every possibility of bringing in a child of ss for god's sake you come soft you come make a child's life miserable because you don't want to face reality when i met my husband do you know one of the tests we did do you know one of the tests we did i didn't took for granted was that we went to check our blood group, we went to check our genotype. We, I want to be sure that this person I'm about to say yes to, we are compatible when it comes to medication, when it comes to uh, um, medical aspect of our lives, that we were compatible. And to God be the glory, we were compatible. So don't blindfold your eyes to say that <laughs> I love him, he loves me, and then you bring in a child that you're going to regret tomorrow, that is going to cause the both of you pain, is going to cost you finance, is going to cost you trouble. Are you ready to face such realities?
come on be truthful to yourselves be truthful to yourself just know that medically this thing cannot work it only it only would take god for you not to give birth to a child who will have ss for god's sake and that is like uh, that is like one in in 10 cases right Hello Rudolph, thank you for joining. Please help me share this video and invite your friends. So it is really important. We we don't shy away from reality talks. We don't shy away from reality talks. Yes, Sir Philip, this message is meant for the youths and all that because I talked, I said before marriage, okay? Your spouse to be, all right? So it has to be before, if I, of course, I'm talking to the youths. So it is so important. Don't blindfold, don't use religion to blindfold your eyes. Don't use, don't use religion. Don't use, oh, says the Lord. Don't use prayers. I've seen people who say, ah, ah, don't worry, uh, I'm AS, you are AS. The Lord is going to do it. I will put it into prayer. There's nothing God cannot do. God will change it. Are you crazy? God will change it. I see. I'm not the. I'm not disputing the the, the ability of God. See, God that 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 made humans like that. He, he wasn't senseless. He was. He was. He's not dumb, right? He's not crazy. For God to have made some to be, to have to be AS, to be AA, to be whatever. See, God is not crazy. God did it for a reason. So if I am if I am AA. If I am AA, I am sure to get married to a man who is SS and will still have children who are just either AA or SS or, or AS rather. So I'm sure of children who are AA or of or AS. So I'm sure that our children are okay. Why? Because I am AA. So God is not stupid enough to 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 make this thing work, and um, and medical people have come to research because I told you guys in one of my videos I was telling when I was talking about this particular to um, aspect I was saying that in those days my mother used to tell us that you know people used to have children with sickle cell diseases but they didn't know it was then called sickle cell because people were thinking that it's demonic, it's spiritual, is um is <laughs> you know it has something to do with um, spirit demons and all that they never knew that it was um it was medical that's it because the father either the father was as and the mother was as or somebody was it has s in their genotype that's why they gave birth to a child of this nature so because of that because of that ignorance they never knew so what the men did was they, they whenever women give birth to children that are sickle cell and because they didn't know it was sickle cell so that woman would either be born alive or the woman would be chased from her husband's house and that child would be killed and all that so they tend to stigmatize the woman that she's a witch or she's a demon she come from a demonic home or she collected the child from a demonic water why from a spirit water because they don't know that it has some it has a trace to medicine it has a trace to do with their genotypes so my mother told us that oh they never knew all those why that it that it was now that light has come people have made research they've come to know that wait 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 all that thing were not demons oh this is for real oh, it was because these people were not medically compatible that was why they had those children so those women that were born alive were, were actually innocent women they were innocent okay but because it was never a thing to 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 get to know to to ask or to go check for you know it was not you know <laughs> there was nothing like that they, they didn't have the knowledge of going to act or going to check there was nothing like that nobody was thinking about it it's not it wasn't in um you know invoke right so it was it was not a question to ask all you get to ask is where is he coming from uh what kind of family he's coming from i remember my mom used to tell us those days okay so though uh, there were some flimsy flimsy they, were they okay okay it's not flame not really flimsy okay people get to uh, ask about their family background and all that and that's how they got married so they never got to ask about the medical aspect but now it is it, it is our responsibility now the light has come the development has come technology has come now we can ask what is your genotype do you know that some women do not know some women do not know their blood group some women do not know their genotype as well as some men and they want to get married they don't even know the woman that they are dating they don't know their genotype they don't know their blood group and they are about to get married they're about to say yes i do my goodness are you serious 
and you're telling me you love is blind love is really blind hello my priscilla thank you for joining hello hi sick hi sec thank you for joining hello ode jeremiah thank you for joining god bless you help me share this video and invite your friends so you know it's it's really funny if reality hits you are you ready for such are you ready for that reality so it's really it's really it's really pathetic it's really pathetic and people will be running from one <laughs> from one church to another at the end of the day seeking for a solution whereas the solution the questions that they, they would have asked yesterday and you know make it a decisive a decision that will help them today that they never asked now they are running to sow seed from one church to another thinking that is the devil it is not the devil sweetheart it was your mistake of yesterday it was the mistake of uh, of, of of that you made yesterday that you never get to ask these important questions that is what you're suffering today there is no demon chasing your home chasing your husband thank you so much mr uga is saying it's the blind love that leads to destruction that is it it is blind love. People are so blind. They will, oh, I love you. I love you. Love is not blind, though. I'm t I t see anybody who wrote that um, <laughs> who wrote that quote. You go and rephrase it. Love is not blind. Love is reality. Love is reality. Love is not blind at all. The, the reason why I should ask is because I love you. So. How then, <laughs> if you say my love is not blind because I'm asking you reality question, then you are fooling yourself. Then you are not being truthful to yourself. There is nothing like blind love. It is that love, it's because I love you. The Bible said, Jesus said at, at, at the time, it is those I love I chastise, right? So if I don't love you, I won't chastise you. Why am I chastising you? I'm chastising you because I want you to get it right. The reason why our parents will want to hit us for doing wrong is because they want to correct our wrong in order for us to do right. So the, it, it was love that led them to hitting us, to thinking that, okay, by hitting us, we get corrected. We get the correction that follows the wrong that we did. So love is open eyes, is not totally blind. I can't be blinded in love that I, I see realities. I don't talk about it. I see reality. I close my eyes to it. If love is blind, then we all will be blind to all the wrongs that our kids do. Then we produce, excuse me, and then we produce a, gener a generation of disaster because nobody wants to correct their love because love is blind. So we all fold our arms and let everything go. We allow everything go if love is blind this society would have been more destructive than it is today because nobody will want to speak up for the wrongs that are going on in society so everything will be acceptable so when 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 everything will be acceptable then we live in a disaster in a world of disaster and doom because everybody wants to do what they feel like it's okay and what you feel like is okay is destroying the next person so because it's okay with me i do it and it's none of your business as long as it's none of your business and you're not you're, you're not Reprimanded. You're not to be. Um, you are not in a in uh, in a position to reprimand me, right? So I do what I do, even though it hurts the next person. So love is not blind. So it takes love to to correct people. It takes wrong to spank a child. It takes uh, love to to correct wrongs. So I say love is not blind. It takes love to ask questions, to make research, to get answer. It takes love. So love is in a way not blind. So some people want to go with that in love enthusiasm. You know when people are in love, they tend to forget reality. They forget. They tend to forget reality. So there's they are all they are being carried away by this in love enthusiasm, and it's just all over them. It's hovering all over. You know that's why <laughs> that's why a preacher will say when when you see two people who are in love and you try to tell them calm down, calm down, wait, try to wait and try to make all this like no 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 I can't wait I can't wait. There's no time. I love him. He loves me. We love ourselves. Please, 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 excuse me, excuse me. We have to get married though. We have to get married next month. Though. We have to get married. Though. No, 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 nobody stop. No, 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 the person does not want to hear. The person does not want to hear corrections. The person does not want to hear advice. The person just want to. I just want it. No, 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 no. It's like a person who is hungry. In the law of diminishing returns, if you study economics, you would know. <laughs> In the law of diminishing returns, you know, the more you, the more 
you consume the more a product is being consumed by an individual what happens the the your, the, your desire to to eat to to take that thing begin to you know diminish so the if you're if you're tasty if you're tasty and you want to drink water the quantity of water you drink at first is not the quantity you want to drink second not third not fourth as so it, it diminishes your 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 desire to want to drink that water diminishes it goes down so if you're so hungry and you get into a pizza uh you get into a pizza shop and maybe you ordered for a little uh, a medium sized pizza or a small sized pizza the amount you consume at the first instance of eating as you 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 consume the first pizza you order for another pizza now your the, the more the um, that the second pizza the quantity you take is not as much as you take from the, from the first pizza right because that first time you were you just want it all you just want to take everything that's how some people when they are in love they just want it now 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 now, now. because it's like they've not okay <laughs> there's this there's this way but especially when they've not had sex before that relationship was sex void right there was no sex involved in that relationship so they've been keeping themselves and when they've been waiting for the right time to get into the you know the, the real deal so they're like no 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 i want to no 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 if i don't get it so they go to the altar until their doors part Woo! congratulations happy married life and the, the minute that the, the you know they consummate that marriage <laughs> the value for that person begins to drop you know as often as you have sex you begin to there's this satisfaction you begin to get so reality begins to set in then you begin to ask yourself okay uh -huh. why is the shoes here why do you keep your shoes here why are your uh, wardrobe uh, disorganized oh you begin to see faults you begin to see faults, faults that you did not see when you were in love, when <laughs> when you were dating. You begin to see why do you, oh why are you snoring, oh why this, oh why that. But before all of those things never matter to you, right? Because you just want this person or you die. So I can't wait. I can't wait. Becomes I wish I had waited. I wish I had waited. Oh I wish I had waited. I wish I had waited. Before it was I can't wait. I can't wait. Hello Sumi Julia, thank you for joining. Hello Mafumi Ade Adewusi, thank you so much for joining. Please, as you come in, help me share the video and invite your friends. This is realities. These are realities that most people don't want to talk about. People who are in uh, relationships, some of them don't want to talk about, don't want to discuss about it. You know what? Some of the things I discuss with my husband. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. You know, some of the things we, me and my husband, we talked about before we got married. You won't believe. You won't believe. See, I'm a realistic person. I'm, 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 I'm very simple. I'm very simple. I don't hold on to religion. I'm not religious. I don't hold on to, you know, religion. I, I, when I, when it's truth, my brother, my sisters, I don't joke with it. Okay. So when I, when I was cutting my husband, when I was dating my husband, I get to ask him realities. I get to, I get to observe for myself. I get to see things. So the things, some of the things I never asked him, I saw that that is already an answer because I saw it. Okay. Instead of me asking, I already got the answer, right? But the ones you did not see and you, you probably, you're not sure of, you ask Ask the question. Don't bother. See, you're going to live with this person. No. It is not your mother will that will live with the person. It is not your pastor's wife that is giving you advice that will live with the person. Neither me. Oh. It is not me that will live with the person, right? It is not your father, not your sisters, not your friends. You and you alone. So any problem that emanates from that marriage is just the both of you. So it is required that the both of you solve the problem because you are the one who said, yes, I do to this person. You are the one who said, of all the men I close my eyes is you I want. Of all the women I close my eyes is you I want. So it means faithfulness to totality, right? So if I choose you, that means I accept everything about you. So for me to accept everything about you, I need to ask the right questions. I need to get the right answers and understand where I'm going to and understand the person I'm heading, you know, the, the person I'm getting married to because this relationship is not just get in today, get out tomorrow. That's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting a union that God will be glorified. I'm expecting a union that will be that will set an example. I'm expecting a union that will be productive. Um, 
you know what i mean productivity and I, i'm not giving not <laughs> child bait right i mean i'm expecting a union that we a solution to humanity i'm expecting a union that that is what emulating i mean it's expecting a union of love a union of a, a union of of joy of peace so if i'm expecting all of this from this union why then should i go blindly why then should i go into it blindly when i need to make the right things i did not do it i was carried away by words by words so it is important we do that as well so there are some there are some there are some uh, another point i have here it's get to ask your spouse then one of the points i i asked yesterday i listed yesterday like when i was doing the recap i said it i said excuse me would you like to have your biological children and when you if you want to have your biological children when would you want to have those biological children right so we discussed about that yesterday and we did briefly uh, uh, about that today and now uh, as well ask this question how many kids do you want us to have if you want your biological children, how many do you want? Some women don't want to have more than two. Some men do not want to have more than one. Hey, <laughs> some African men want to have up to thirty, up to fifty, up to ten. You know, they just say, uh, "My mother gave birth to only me. I'm the only child." So, so this woman that you got married to want to fill your generation, right? So. You, you want to give birth to all the children that your mother was supposed to give birth to for you, for your father. So, uh -huh. so the woman had come to refill the home. Are you serious? So you are the only child. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. how did I now become uh, the one who is to produce all the children that your mother never gave birth to? Excuse me, I don't understand. Some men will tell you, yes, yeah, so uh, baby girl, I'm the o I'm the only child. Though you know, it means if I die now, my father's name would die. So we need to give birth to as many children as possible. Have you heard? So have you heard some African men say such things? Have you heard some guys say some things like that? I hey <laughs> God, have you heard men fighting over children? Over how many children the the wife will give birth to? Have you heard something like that? Well, I have. I have. Welcome to reality. I have. I've seen men beat their wives because they don't want, they're tired of giving birth. A woman is having eight children already, eight children. And the man is saying, no, I want more. And the woman is like, I'm tired. I've eight children. I mean, eight children. I'm going to the labor room every time to go and push. I'm tired. And the man is like, no, I am your husband. The Bible says you must submit to me you might submit to my authority so you have to submit to me as many children as i want you must give to me oh my god oh my my god you know what this is terrible this is slavery this is wickedness it is wickedness for you to subject her into filling your home with all the number of children that her womb can produce all because you 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 want children all because you are the only child of your father and you want to fill the home that is selfishness that is wickedness she is a personality and she has her own say as well that means you do not respect her place in the house you do not respect her place in the home it's as if she's just your slave so anything you want you do to her so you see a woman you did not discuss it before you get into the marriage you see, that is why some wise women, would I, would I say wise women now? <laughs> would I say wise women? That's why some women will go, go as far as doing a court wedding. Just so in case the man is taking them for granted, they get out of the marriage. Because they have papers, they have documents that will take them out. So you see, it is so, so important. Don't say I'm the only daughter. Uh, or... Of course, not mostly, not even the daughters, only daughters that does that. It's only men. <laughs> if it's only son of the house, yes, you am the only son of the house. Oh, I'm the only child of my parents. So because I'm the only child of my parents, we must give birth to. And the woman has given birth to eight children. And you're saying, no, we have to continue. We have to continue until we make sure that you can no longer produce children. Ah! Egba mio woman, you don't enter one chance. So welcome to one chance. Welcome to reality.com.org. Do you know what the stress it takes to push? That 
That woman can lose her life any time, any day. Because for every time she's giving birth, she is she's getting weaker. See, the veins, every vein in her body is, is not getting stronger. It's not getting younger. She's getting older. So you're asking her, push, push as long as she can produce all those children. Bring it. Bring it. I've seen men, as in, there was this one that happened in my own very eyes. I mean, this guy is supposed to be learning. He's supposed to be, he's supposed to be, I mean, should I, <laughs> I don't know if I should say intelligent. Okay, it's intelligent. Of course, because to me, he's supposed to be intelligent, right? Because he looked enlightened. This is a man who had money, right? And <laughs> this man had given birth to seven children already. He had four, either four or three boys, right? We had about, okay, let's say four boys, three girls, something like that. I can't remember. And the woman is saying, I am tired of giving birth. And the man is like, no, you have to give birth. You have to give birth. Hello, my Olu Shola. Thank you so much for, for joining. Hello, John Ifai. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Please help me share this video and invite your friends. So the woman is saying no. The man is saying yes. The man is saying no. The man is saying yes. And this woman ends up being beaten. You get to see her face. I mean, these are the people. I, I stay in Abuja when I was in Nigeria. Some of them, these are the people I stay in Abuja with. This woman will be beaten blue, black. From a man who is supposed to be an enlightened man, all because he wants children, all because he wants to produce children. And the woman is saying, I'm, get, I'm tired. I already had enough children. The man is saying, No, you must give birth to children. And so every time pastors need to come and settle issue, uh, issues, they need to come and quote scriptures. And <laughs> all the scriptures they've quoted for that man did not work. Oh. All the advice pastors have given to him did not work. Oh. All the advice they gave to the woman did not work. Oh. The woman, the man wants children. And he does not know that that child can take the, man's, the woman's life. Just at the point of pushing, she can give up. So, it, so is that what you want for her? So, so women don't get to discuss how many children they will, get, they will give birth to before they get to the, the relationship. So they just got into the relationship only to discover that the man wants to give birth to 30 children. I remember my, my father wanted my mother to give birth to 36 children. <laughs> and my mother is like, what? The man say, my father said, no, you have to give birth to 36. Say he has numbered them. He had given them names. <laughs> Oh my God! He you know he bought his ex. <laughs> he bought a notebook when he was growing up, and he wrote the numbers of his children that he wants to give birth, and he counted thirty six of them. So thirty six children he wanted from just one woman, from my mother. <laughs> and my mother had given birth to close to ten children, and the man is saying you have to give birth to thirty six children. Believe me, when I was growing up, when I think when I was about nine or ten years old, and I always hear them quarrel, I was I always hear them argue about giving birth, and my mother is like, No, she cannot continue giving birth. My father, my father will hit her. My head, they're always quarreling, they're always fighting about giving birth. And my mother is like, No, I can't continue giving birth. My father is saying, You must continue. You are my wife, you must continue. You must give birth to 36 children. Can you imagine the slavery? Can you imagine the slavery? My mother took her stand and she she stood, you know, her ground, but it wasn't easy. What happened was that they were always fighting, they were always fighting, and she refused to give birth. If not that she did took her stand, she would have given birth to 36 children. That's because a man wanted 36 children. So ask the man, humbly ask him. Oh, Please, how many children do you want? How many children do you want us to give birth to? That's if we even give children give birth at all. If that is if God will bless us with children, oh, how many children should, would you like to have? Hear the man's story, oh, hear his own side, oh, <laughs> before reality will hit you and you become his punching box. You become his punching bag. So ask the man, how many children would you want to have? If the man says he wants to have five children, you as the woman, are you okay? 
Are you sure you're okay with giving birth to five children? If he say he wants ten children, are you okay with giving birth to ten children? If he says he wants two, are you okay with giving birth to two? If he says he wants three, are you okay with giving birth to three? If it's something you guys need to discuss, discuss it. Discuss it before you go to the altar and say, yes, I do. And when you are done saying, yes, I do, reality then hits you and then you become the slave. You become the punching box. You become his punching bag. You know, he begins to hit you. He begins to hate you. He begins to make life miserable and life hell for you all because you don't want to give him the number of children he, you know, he has envisaged to have. He has been dreaming of having because you never talked about it because you thought it was not important, right? Where there are women who are suffering till today in their relationship, in their marriages because of this just one day, just this one issue. So ask your husband, how many children would you want? You know, I think that was two weeks ago. A woman posted um, a story on Facebook how that uh, a woman gave birth to a child. And the man said, I do not want. Um, he, I think they've give, they gave birth to, I don't know if it's two, if it's three or four. So, and the man is saying, okay, I'm okay with this three. Let's not give birth to another child. So... I don't know if it's mistakenly or something according to that story the woman uh, took in and the man was like i bought the baby and the wife was like i bought my own child the woman was like i already i already have three children i don't want another child the woman said sorry i can't abort this baby the baby had already entered where do i start from how do i abort my own blood the man said if you if you give birth to this child this child will be your doom as in Hey, this child will be your doom. The woman was thinking it's a lie. She she took the pregnancy, kept the pregnancy. The man, according to that story, she 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 was revealing her life story, right? Right? She said the man never take care of her. The man neglected her everything, including the hospital bills, the antenatal bills. She paid all by herself. She gave birth to this child, to this child, and the man made life miserable for her and the baby the man would beat her even while she was pregnant with this baby the man would beat her because he wanted to make sure that she had miscarriage but she never did so the man the when she gave birth to the, the baby the man would beat her both both she and the child why because the man wanted that child to be to be dead the man wanted to kill the child because he didn't want that child because he didn't want the child so you see, you either discuss <laughs> with your spouse to be. How many kids do you want us to have? How many kids would you want us to have? That only that one question have ruined have ruined homes of today. People are living in, in in slavery. Women are living in slavery, and women are being tortured all because of just this one question. Hello, Olua Femi, Ezekiel, thank you for joining. Hello, my Chama, thank you so much for joining. God bless you. Please help me share the video and invite your friends. So ask the man, how many kids would you want us to have? It's as important as anything, though. <laughs> how many kids? And when you guys are done discussing, make sure it's okay by you before you, you jump into, you know, getting married to him. So you don't become his punching box tomorrow or because you don't want to have the number of children he wants to have. Or you don't want to stop having children while he had already said to himself, I don't want it again. And you want to have more children. So it becomes it becomes a problem. All right. So don't get yourself into, you know, a uh, problem because of all this. Because of all that. So it is so important. It is so important. I guess, um, <laughs> you know, we've done justice to part two today. If I have more points tomorrow or next, whenever I'm chance to come live on Facebook, because I have a baby, <laughs> I have a little baby I have to take care of. So I don't come to the live Facebook all the time. As much as I have time, anytime I have time and the baby is sleeping or we're not out of the house, I come live on Facebook and do my teachings. But, um, if 
if uh, if we're out of the house or my baby it's uh, be uh, not sleeping of course i'm not gonna be here <laughs> so thank you so much everyone that joined me today i'm so so grateful so please if you did not watch yesterday's video wow 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 <laughs> that video had hit 4k views already so because the points were really really powerful and stuff that people don't talk about people don't discuss you know nobody tells us to they will nobody tell us to ask these questions before marriage so because the points i raised in part one were reality questions were reality questions things you most people you don't read in books you don't see most of those points written in books in relationship books okay you don't see them but i picked those points because i see them happening in real life so but nobody's talking about it so i said to myself no no no, i have to talk about this okay because some of the questions i, I also said i asked my own spouse i also <laughs> i asked my husband before marriage and okay so we're good we're good and then we had to go and i had to agree to the marriage right so please 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 don't shy away from this uh, the these questions they are so real they are so real real they are so real happening everywhere all over the world so don't be deceived don't be limited to questions don't be limited you are a human and that is why you are meant to ask questions okay <laughs> just as your children when they are growing they ask you questions they ask you anything even things that don't make sense okay <laughs> they ask you why because they are inquisitive they want to know they want to learn that's why they ask you stupid things and you are like oh my god this is just a stupid question right that, the child just want to know daddy why is this thing called black mommy why is this thing called white okay so uh if you want to call in or you want to share a contribution by calling please go ahead and do that go ahead and do that i will sure be grateful to do that you know so um somebody was trying somebody sent me a request and want to contribute to connect with somebody <laughs> the person wants to actually come in to you know share his or her request okay but i think it, the person is gone because i think it's network or something okay so it's really really has been awesome you know, yeah, la <laughs> two days ago was really, 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 really hard because, you know, we had controversial uh, points and some people were arguing about premarital sex and all that, you know, and some people were like, no, it's not okay. And <laughs> but I wasn't having enough time. And that was why I didn't invite people to come in and speak about what they or what their views were about that particular point. So but right now, if you have something important <laughs> to contribute, so why not? I will be glad to bring you live and uh, just send me requests and i would just do that and you know we get to learn from what you have to say as well because no one is an island everybody has something to offer right <laughs> so but uh in the absence of that if i don't have any requests i will sure going to say goodbye to everyone so i will see you when i see you when i i if i'm able to come tomorrow why not i will come back and continue from where we stop or if i have another topic to talk about and then we do it so stop sharing the video let's break the shackles let's let's break the fear the fear that fear of you know what if i ask this how, how is it going to feel or how is she going to feel see don't be afraid to ask these questions because it will save you of heartbreak tomorrow it will save you a lot tomorrow i told you guys of a story yesterday that a guy was almost marrying a hiv um hiv uh you know diseased or uh, hiv infected lady and this lady never get, get to tell him that she was hiv positive why right? because he was hiding it she wanted to marry this guy because the guy had too much money okay so she was hiding but he was lucky that the church had to do a test for the both of them and they got to know that she was uh, hiv positive but it happened just on the day of the wedding so the man has spent millions and millions already organizing that wedding before that event that he got to know that the wife to be was hiv positive okay so and the marriage was called off but it was called off in pain in tears in you know fights because they had to fight physical you know fight broke up that saturday morning 
you know the the guy was truly disappointed by the with the girl and her parents and you know physical fights started all because people want to hide things people don't want to be open to the people or the persons that they are dating okay and people never took uh, this uh, chance to go for medical checkups you don't want to check you don't want to go check do medical checkups before marriage before you go join your 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 your, your tied knots are you serious go for medical checkups let love not, let love not blind anything my sister my brother go for medical checkups is very important i remember too when me and my husband when we were when we we're dating we did that we went for medical checkups it's important i needed to know if we were medically compatible it's not just in 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 the stds right it's not just that part but uh, uh, the part of genotype i needed to know if we are compatible if we are we're compatible if we're not compatible that's a big problem it's like me having to have a child who has sickle cell how, where do i start from how do, why do i handle it am i oh my god am i mentally sound to psychologically sound to high, to handle a child of that nature will i be able to do it will, do i have the energy do i have the mindset do i have everything it takes to to bring up a child who is you know uh, suffering from such ailment so something i would have reverted something i would have averted all because of my stupidity that love is blind and i got myself i got a child who is SS? Oh, because I don't want to have, I don't ask question. Oh God, I'm so afraid. Oh God, I'm so this. Oh, if I ask the question, he will feel bad. Oh, he will feel this. Really? Okay, no problem. Wait until reality hits you. Then you will know that those questions were not out of, out of the box, right? Hello, Ken. Thank you for joining. Hello, Mama Monica. Thank you for joining. Aisha Nana. Thank you. Hello, Sir Albert Kicha. Thank you for joining. Elizabeth. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you for joining. Hello, Nelly. Nelly, thank you so much for joining, guys. God bless you. Please help me share this video and invite your friends to come and watch later. So I'm done for today. I'm sure going to connect with you guys tomorrow. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow. So we continue spreading the light and keep speaking the truth. Okay. All right. So thank you. Thank you for those of you who commented, for those of you who shared, for everything, for all your support. Um, so, so grateful. I forgot to read a question. Uh, somebody asked me a question. Okay. Okay, I think we talked about it already. Have you had a chat before? One of my videos, the first video I did about this, somebody asked me about five questions. And I told him the five questions you asked, four of it were answered in the first videos. And I answered one of the questions today. And that was, uh, I think that was the first point we raised today. Uh, that question was gotten from somebody who inboxed me after the first video. Um, I hope he gets to see the, this second video and see the answer to his question <laughs> so guys thank you thank you thank you thank you so much for all your support for everything i'm so grateful god god bless you so keep sharing the video and keep enlightening people and keep setting people free share the video i'm sure you will be setting somebody free okay somebody who is about to make the wrong the one of the biggest mistakes of his or her life you know without getting to think about reality and you know this the love enthusiasm is still over them all right so i'm sure if they watch this video they will have a rethink of what they're about to do okay so please 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 share the video and get to enlighten people and uh, they will be grateful that you share they'll be thankful that you know you shared such an amazing to uh, stuff to them because you know it sets them free eventually okay so thank you so much i remain your friend t-o-p-s-y topsy so guys have a blessed day and i will see you tomorrow so guys bye for now